I want to give you an overview of the map we have designed to go through the juridical identity of PPP. Here is the map you can find in the chapter 5 of the book of, on public-private partnership governing common interest. Um, this is a map that you can read both vertically and horizontally. Starting from a vertical exam of the contents of the map, there you can see that starting from the chapter one, we gave you an idea of the semantic approach to public-private partnership, discussing reasons and advantages of public-private par partnership as an instrument frequently used both in the international and national dimension. Um, the first uh, content we discussed was that PPP appears to be a compromise between public and private to achieve the same goal. This is true both in the international and in the national dimension. Here in the international dimension you see we saw together how the public-private partnership appeared to be a, an instrument to reach global values. So the same goal coming from the semantic approach in the international dimension becomes the, the global value. Then in the local dimension, reading the map horizontally as I said, this compromise had the, 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 had the, became an instrument to carry out public tasks. So in the local dimension, PPP is used to, to carry out public tasks, as we saw, in order to react to the spending, uh, to the spending review policies, PPP helps public authority to carry out public tasks in finding in the private an instrument to bring values and money to public authorities in order to pursue public interest. Then again, compromise to achieve the same goal. We saw, yes, it's true, but same goal does not mean same objective. We discover that there is in, in PPP, there is a unique aim between the public and the private party of the partnership, but they can have different objectives to pursue. Um, we will see that this compromise must become an agreement in juridical term when we will discover the reconstruction of the juridical notion of public-private partnership. Then the second line, uh, semantic approach showed us that PPP is an experience of cooperation, so not of juxtaposition as sometimes happens when you are in front of a contract. So PPP is a sort of uh, juridical environment in which you find cooperation and not just a position, even if you are facing contracts. So this means in the international dimension that you will find this kind of cooperation that is goal-oriented network, in which goal-oriented networks are the most important features of the public-private partnership initiative in inserted in, in, in the international dimension. While in the local dimension, you see that PPP is an instrument, is an alternative instrument to public procurement. In public procurement is frequently, you can find the logic of just a position between the two, part, two or more parties of the procurement. On the contrary, if you are, if you are applying a public-private partnership, you will see how it's possible to have cooperation also in, in pursuing public tasks. Um, then cooperation means co-management of public tasks, if you want to be more precise. So if you are able to distinguish PPP from other instruments of of uh, uh, public law, you will see that the one of the, the peculiarity of public-private partnership is that with public-private partnership you have a co-management of public tasks. And this is very different from other kind of juridical instruments because in PPPs there's um, a unique entity working to together with public and private, both co-managing the public task. For example, this is not the same in public procurement, because in public procurement you will have a public and the private from different sides 
and you will not have a co-management of public tasks. Uh, if you want to go in the reconstruction side, this joint management of one or more activities become the object of the technical definition of public-private partnership, that is an agreement for the joint management of one or more activities in the public task. Then again, using a, a more general approach, we saw that PPP allows to escape from the isolation of responsibility, and this is particularly true for public authorities, that with PPP escape from the traditional isolation of public responsibility. Uh, joining in a public-private partnership, the um, public authority becomes to be no more isolated and becomes to be something working together with a private, so becomes to be um, more and more, more um, democratic in the approach and also more able to be involved in, in an agreement in which there's also a profitable part for the public authority. So here you have in the international dimension the, the sensitivity for the states not to be left alone. So a call for joining the state, a call for helping public authority in going out of their responsibility isolation. Um, in the local dimension, you have a valorization of the bottom-up initiatives that is a consequence of the idea that we want to escape from the isolation in which the public authority are left. If you want to overcome the common misperception around PPP, you have to say that cooperation doesn't mean that PPP helps when there's a market failure. On the contrary, PPP is an experience of co-management, is an experience of uh, overcoming the uh, isolation of both the private and the private and the private, well, sorry, both the private and the public sectors. So be uh, pay attention not to confuse PPP as instruments to overcome the market failure. PPP is cooperation, not overcoming of market failure. On the contrary, market helps PPP. Market helps public authority. Market is an essential part of the public-private partnership schemes. Then, more from a political side, we saw in, in studying, in analyzing the semantic approach, how PPP is an instrument to enhance the participatory democracy. And this is very true both in the international and in the national dimension. In the international dimension, you can catch the people first approach, that is a, uh, something very frequently um, acclaimed in the international dimension. People first approach means that it's important to give people, people meaning individual, but also people staying together in the association or other entities in which people's express their self. So in, in the participatory, participatory democracy means in the international dimension, people force approach. So valorization of individuals, of communities, valorization of social actors. And this is very important from the side of, of PPP as an instrument of modern policy. In the local dimension, here you have, of course, political, social and economic dimension of inclusion coming from the use of public-private partnership instruments. And this is true because give us the idea of how important it is for government to, uh, to use public-private partnership from the side of a communication based on, on, on inclusion of social actors and individuals. And then we have the uh, idea that this participatory, participatory democracy represents public interest because at the end public interest is the, the sum of the interest coming from the actors of the society, coming from the individual of our communities, coming from the entities being legal things for our legal framework. So there you see that starts to appear how it's important not to lose the public interest as the heart of public-private partnership experience. 
Um, and we will see how in the juridical identity of PPP uh, there's a scheme able to bring satisfaction of the public interest in involved in the public-private partnership. So we'll see that at the end, cooperation uh, means non-state actors as principal protagonists of the achievement of sustainable development goals in the international dimension, while in the local one, uh, ask us to give or, or allow us to give relevance to um, political, social and economic dimension of inclusion bringing people and community in the, from the state side of the public interest, so bringing communities, bringing businesses, bringing individuals together with public authority, being able to move from their responsibility isolation in the co-management of public interest, of, of public trust in public interest. This is the, how you can read this table horizontally, but you can read the table also vertically. If you read it vertically, you can discover a story from each of these columns of the table. For example, in the international dimension, you have public-private partnership representing and pursuing global values through goal-oriented networks and able to take the states out of their responsibility isolation and you will have an announcement of people first approach with non-state actors as protagonists of the achievement of sustainable development goals. Again, in the local dimension, you will discover that PPP is an instrument to carry out public tasks, alternative to public procurement, in the valorization of bottom-up initiatives with a very meaningful policy of political, social and economic dimension of inclusion. If you want to understand how this uh, is able to overcome the common misperception on PPP, you will say that yes, PPP brings together parties for the same goal, but this is means unique aim, not unique objective. You can have unique aim, but different objectives you are sure that PPP is the co-management of public tasks, so it's not public procurement. You are sure that PPP is a form of cooperation in which public and private act together, so there's nothing uh, related to market failure. And you have at the center of the partnership the pursuing of public interest. So from the juridical identity of PPP, you will have to reconstruct the agreement PPP is an agreement for the joint management of one or more activities for the satisfaction of a public interest. So here you can have all the analysis we have done in the previous, in the previous chapters with the idea to bring you to reconstruct the juridical identity of PPP, putting together all the findings of our research.